What's going on everybody? It's Harley from Epic Tube HD coming back at you with another epic video. And what have I got lined up for you this time? We're going to delve into the world of the indie TCG market. Now, indie signifies that these are typically brand new, low budget companies starting a brand new game. And that's why they earn the signifier indie. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what has happened over the past three years, three to four years. We're going to start from the bottom, the least supported Kickstarter, all the way to the most biggest one, basically, the largest supported Kickstarter. And this is really all because I have finally decided to join and back a Kickstarter world of Nom Nom. I think it has great potential. I believe in the people that are running it. It actually kind of has uh, shifted a lot of people over from a previous indie TCG known as MetaZoo. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're gonna be doing. And as of today of this filming, they're three days in and they basically just hit $300,000. So they're already doing really well. And I actually did put them on this list. But let's go ahead and get right into this and check out these indie TCGs. First on our list, all right, it is BAM! What does that stand for? Back Alley Mages. Now, I had the pleasure to meet this couple it, at Collecticon. I believe it was in Dallas. I've actually received something from them, and I actually picked something up from them in Dallas, and I was really, really impressed with what, with what they were doing. Now, the reason why you don't see a Kickstarter information right now on the screen is because I believe they have not done a Kickstarter. I think they went solo. They tried to do this on their own and get their own backing. But I'm really impressed with their higher end card. I mean, they had some that really blew me away. In fact, if you check out on this channel, I'll put a link at the end. One of the Collecticons actually did a pretty good job of filming some of their really nice cards and again very very impressive stuff but when it comes to their backing i have no idea where they received it from I'm not sure how they did it. i know they have a private website but i know they did not at least i don't think they went kickstarter i couldn't find it but that's going to lead us to the next one and again we're we're starting from the bottom going to the top so these are the least supported kickstarters going up now again back alley mages i have no clue but here we go into our next one, and that is Mythic. Uh, now, some of these games are going to be from the United States, some are going to be from Canada, and some are from Europe. Mythic comes out of Chicago, Illinois. They only garnered around $14,780, as you can see here on the screen. They had 89 backers. I did see some Mythic stuff out there. I don't have really a personal opinion about it. I honestly can't remember it. But I'm not sure if they're still hanging around, if they're still making cards. Uh, I just wanted to check and see how their Kickstarter really did. I'm, again, I'm really trying to measure up where World of Nom Nom is currently at in its three days versus all these other Kickstarters where they pretty much finished at. But this is, uh, I believe, number 26 on the list. So let's go ahead and check out number 25. We got MetaZoo. I, that one blows a lot of people away because nobody understands that or nobody knows that when MetaZoo ran its Kickstarter, it was not a hundred thousand or a couple hundred or even a million. It literally was just eighteen thousand dollars, two hundred and fifty-five backers. That's it. That's all MetaZoo had in its Kickstarter back in 2000, going into 2001. So it's pretty amazing what they had done in the beginning. But unfortunately, it seems it was a tale of very, very fast growth. In fact, maybe a little too much, a little too much ambition involved. And then there was just a whole bunch of other, a plethora of other issues that basically have arisen up to this date where we don't even know if they're still in business or not. I mean, officially, they announced they were out of business. However, that was retracted, but it was never retra retracted officially. So as, of, as far as we're all concerned, they are out of business. But we're hearing a lot of rumors that they're not, that there's a possible sale going on, there's a possible bankruptcy, there's just so much going on we really don't know. But that is the state of the MetaZoo today. But it's pretty crazy when you look back and you realize they only got $18,000. And of course, again, if you go back, I did remove 
a lot of my MetaZoo videos. Uh, I did it for personal reasons, but uh, I had some interviews with the creator, and I was told by the creator that he had fronted a lot of money up front himself. So, you know, I think it was a little bit disappointing probably just to see that 18000 But if you can see, their pledge goal was only $10,000. So they actually met their pledge goal. So that's going to take us into number 24 on the list, and that is Dynasty TCG. Now, this comes out of Britain, Great Britain, I believe. In fact, it shows Nottingham, UK. So uh, Dynasty, I've actually seen a few of those around as well. Again, kind of um, not the most impressive card stock, if I remember right. But again, I'm kind of a sucker for anything that's Japanese, very anime-ish. I do love those those styles, especially like old school, um, showing kind of like Kyoto type stuff. Dynasty got around, it well, shows you right here, $20,000. And that is, again, that's in the uh, British pound. So probably around, I didn't do the calculation, but I think it's maybe... 22, 23,000, maybe somewhere around that area, US dollars, 69 backers. And to be honest with you, I have no idea where they're at. I don't know if they're still making product, if they're continuing, because I haven't heard anything. Again, I didn't really research to see if they were still in business. That's not what this video is about. Again, we were just trying to compare Kickstarter uh, versus Kickstarter stuff. So that's going to take us to the next one down to, I believe this is number 23, uh, Pangea. Now, I got to meet these guys again at Collecticon. I believe this was the second Collecticon in Dallas that I met them in last May, I want to say. And they were really cool. The cards are okay. Uh, they gave me a bunch of promos that I was giving away to people. And they're, I think they're still hanging around, actually. And, of course, if you look at their Kickstarter, they were able to... Bring in $41,000. $41,000. That's not chump change. That is really good. And it shows that their goal was just twenty-five. dollars So they nearly came close to doubling their goal, which is really good for them. So they had 105 backers. Pangea really uh, revolves around the Pangea era, if you didn't catch that by now. A lot of dinosaur-themed cards in this one. Again, I liked it. It was okay. It wasn't like blowing me out of the water. Now, their booth was right behind my buddy's Mav Collectibles at Dallas. So, I did get to watch the, a game being played. Now, anybody who knows me, I'm not that big into the gameplay aspects of it. So, I really couldn't tell you that much about it. But, I was told from somebody else it wasn't the greatest of gameplay. It's more about, I can think, if you just have a love for dinosaurs, man. I think it's really what it comes from. So, but that's going to lead us into our next one. I believe this is number 22 or 21 on the list. And that is Life. Again, this is another game. I actually saw a few cards from it at Collecticon. They were able to bring in 54,000 British pounds. Again, this is another game out of Oxford, Great Britain, uh, England. So they had 130 backers on this one. I think this had a lot of potential originally. They're, they only pledged for 10,000. That was their original goal. But they hit 54, so they did extremely well. Again, it's another game. I'm not too sure if they're still putting stuff out there, but it's it's a game based on animals, based on life. So if you haven't seen that one, you can check them out. Again, I believe most of these TCGs all have websites if you want to check them out. I might be able to track down some of the stuff and put it in the description. We'll see here if I can do that. But we're going to move on to the next Indie TCG. Again, we're going from the bottom up, the most the least supported to the most supported and the next one up is chronicles of arcane which by the way it is still active now the owner of the game sent me some stuff however it looks like the, the united states postal service lost it so i never got it i couldn't get to uh, review it and take a look and see how it was i've had a few people get some stuff and they said they actually kind of like it now if you like dragons like i do i hear it's really really good for that again i actually I haven't seen it yet it does give a lot of the old um magic the gathering vibes based on its art style uh it's somewhat kind of flesh and blood as well but that's kind of where you're looking at it uh, the person who actually made it, I believe, was also involved in MetaZoo or, you know, really liked MetaZoo as well. But a lot of people seem to be really liking what they're doing. But it's still an active Kickstarter as of time of this filming. And as they indicate here in their photo, they were literally funded within six hours. Now, their goal was also very low, just 
$12,500. They are now sitting at $27,000. They've doubled their goal. So I guess any time any of these companies are able to double their goal, that's got to be a huge ordeal for them and probably help them you know, push along more than they suspect. So the, I think the big thing here is going to be how these companies manage these funds and do they try to go big? Do they stay within you know the scope of what they originally planned? Which I think is probably the smarter move to do. So hopefully Crown of Skull Kane will do really well. But we're going to move on to our next one. I think this is either number 19 or number 20 on the list. And that is Gem Blenders. Gem Blenders. Again, another company who sent me some stuff. They sent me actually just one card, one hollow. And it was actually like I was really impressed with it. I really, really liked it. Now, I've seen some of their other cards officially. I, it's kind of a 50-50 thing, so some were hit, some were missed. Kind of a cool thing. It's a weird, little weird game. I believe it involves gems. It's, uh, again, based here out of the U.S. They've raised $50,000. Their goal was twenty. So, again, another company who doubled their money. 247 backers. I believe they're based out of New York City as well. So, uh, I, I know they're still running around uh, printing up, I believe, doing new sets. But Gem Blenders, again, is another TCG trading card game, which is also, again, these are also all CCGs, so they're all collectible card games as well. However you kind of view it, I kind of view it as the same thing. You know, if you listen to some people, they call it a CCG, and the other people, they call it a DCG. But at the end of the day, they're all considered indie card games. So, Gem Blenders, again, I did get that. I have a, a short video on the channel you can actually find it and you can check out the card in fact i think they sent me two cards i've made two videos on it i believe but yeah we're gonna move on to the next indie dcg and that is dream book philip over at dream book now i first met philip back in 2022 at collecticon and i think it was i want to say it was dallas collecticon i first met him and uh i know my buddy will will ferner was helping him out and they have reached sixty-seven thousand, almost sixty-eight thousand dollars in Kickstarter. They had one hundred and thirty-two backers. Now, one hundred thirty-two backers and sixty-seven thousand. It's it almost seems like they really hit a home run on that one. There, uh, they're out of California. Of course, you see Rancho Cucamonga. Now, uh, Dream Book. I actually have some of their product. I've opened it here on the channel. Uh, I got some of their theme decks. I did not get a booster box when I had the opportunity. I should have gotten one. I believe one was even offered to me, and I didn't take it. I think I just took, like, a theme deck or something. Uh, they had their, I believe it was their A sample decks or something at the time. So those were, you know, they're pretty cool. They've gotten, they're still going. Now, they've gotten a little wild and crazy with their card arts now. I'm kind of not feeling it as much as I was feeling it. This was actually, believe it or not, this was actually a TCG that I was going to back. Unfortunately, I did run into some funding problems at the time. I ended up having to back out of it. But I've never backed the TCG before, and I was going to back the Green Book. However, because of my personal issues, I had to pull out, unfortunately. I would have loved to have still gotten the stuff. You know, I think it would have been pretty cool. I did like a lot of the earlier artworks they first were coming out with. They also did have um, some negativity that came along. I know there was some infighting happening with former partners. There were people, you know, claiming certain things about the card arts. But uh, I, I personally talked to Philip, and I was assured how it all went down. So, you know, I think it just seemed more like it was just like uh, people either being upset, jealous, just wanting to take revenge on them, I guess. I don't know. I don't really have a personal opinion in it. It's just kind of what I heard from a lot of other people. But, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Vanquishers TCG. Now, this is a TCG that Epic Ethan and I, we kind of ran into, um, it was awkward, I, not awkward, it was weird how we ran into it, but we really liked it, and of course, it really falls in line, if you're a, if you're a gamer, and you're into all those RPG games, you know, you're into Halo, and, 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 uh, man, I can't even think of all the games right now, but all the shooter games, right, first person shooter games, this particular TCG definitely geared towards that, and they sent us a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful box to open up. Epic Youth and I, we made a great video on it. Uh, it was actually really fun. And they've actually sent me another item to open from their Kickstarter campaign, which we're going to open here on the channel. But really enjoyed. I really liked the presentation. I think the presentation 
is what really blew me personally out of the water. Uh, the cards were, I thought were done really well too. I did like the arts and everything. I thought it was pretty cool. And for anybody who's into RPG, who plays video games and stuff, I mean, this TCG was really, really good for that. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, definitely check them out. They're out of Miami, Florida. I really like the guys too. I think they're pretty cool out down there and I've got to talk to them a little bit. So Vanquishers TCG pulled in $68,000. And uh, again, I, I really like the presentation. I have the box somewhere over here. I should have probably got it so I could show you guys because I thought that was the coolest part was presentation. We got a play mat with it, everything else. But again, we do have another item from them that I'm going to open up here on the channel. Now that I can open up more stuff here, we're going to be doing that. So look out for a future Vanquishers uh, video here on the channel. But let's go on to our next Indie TCG. And we got Interstellar, another really epic Indie TCG that I got to meet at Collecticon. Uh, big shout out to Mr. Run It Up Collectibles, Logan, who introduced me to the guys at Interstellar. They're out of Chicago, Illinois. The game is based on, obviously, the universe, the Interstellar. And they had a couple pretty big backers. Uh, oh, man, I forget what, uh, one of the guys, but he's a real big backer. In fact, they had two or three really big backers on this one. They brought in $73,000, and they had 142 backers. Again, uh people feel very confident in what they're doing i also was able to get some product from them at collective con and i opened it up it was i really enjoyed it really really gave me old pokemon the very last era of watsi you know wizards of the coast the expedition e-series uh era there with expedition sky ridge um that era where they had like the barcode on it but it was the artwork with the half oval circle and stuff they it just really hit home for me i really really liked it again it's something where you know is it a tcg that you can get into as far as playing game goes or is it a collectible of course i was looking at it from a collector aspect of it i really did uh like what they were doing i like some of their rares they were doing serialized stuff as well again they pull in at i think it's around number 17 or 18 here on the list the 73 thousand dollars and again they had they did attend i believe all the collective cons last year so they definitely put in the marketing forward a lot of these indie tcgs pretty much were going to all the collective cons all year long so they're really getting their stuff out there but let's move on to our next one here on the list that is primal uh primal was another one i got to meet at collective con i really was impressed with their stuff i kind of wish i would have spent a little bit more time checking their stuff out I know the little bit I saw, I really liked, really liked it. And I just never got a chance to go back and hit him, hit him back up. But I thought Primer was looking pretty cool when I first saw it. Now, they were able to bring in $78,000, and they're another US company here. 70,008 chunk change, people, 207 backers. Now, again, I'm not sure where they're currently at right now, but I do believe they are still making sets. And I was really kind of impressed with what they had. You know, it's the, the market for any of these is, is actually growing immensely. So there's quite a few out there. And, you know, you can like everything. You can be like sports. You can just be someone who likes every team out there. Or you can really just like your home teams, you know. And, of course, most people really always gravitate back to one of the big three. Obviously, the big three would be Pokemon, Magic, and Yu-Gi-Oh! And now we've got, you know, the other... I wouldn't say that they're not the big three, but, you know, they're huge animes like One Piece. Of course, there's Dragon Ball and there's Digimon, you know, who, for their umpteenth time, are trying to get these things going again. But right now, One Piece is actually killing it, right? But as far as Primal goes, again, I really enjoyed it. I hope I get to see them. I am going to Collecticon again in a couple weeks, so hopefully I'll get to see them out there. And I'll probably talk to them a little bit more. I definitely wanted to get an interview in with them, but that brings me to our next one, Titan. This is a tough one, everyone. This is a real tough one. But back in 2022, in Los, Los, well, not Los Angeles, well, Los Angeles, but Long Beach, Electicon, I've already met these guys a couple times, but I actually got to do an interview with their creator named Mike. And I was literally the last person to actually get an interview with, with him. And unfortunately, he had a health issue while they were there. And I had learned that night that he had passed away. 
Well, everybody was sad. Uh, it was a very, very, you know, it kind of actually brought the mood down at Collecticon in Long Beach, which was crazy. Kind of brought it down. People were definitely sad about what had happened. Uh, I believe his mother was there. She was at the booth during the Sunday event. And it was a very sad and somber thing. We all signed, I think, this this uh, old, like, Greek mythology helmet that they had there. And fortunately, we had learned later on that Mike was actually stealing from the company, he was stealing from his friends, from his backers. It was a it was a very bad mess. And unfortunately, I believe Titan did go under. I know they were, you know, the hardcores were trying to keep it alive and revive it. It was based on Greek mythology. It was actually pretty cool. I, I wasn't the biggest fan of the cards and stuff, but there were some I thought were okay, but the majority I wasn't a big fan of, but a lot of people really did like it. And obviously with 109,000, oh, you know what? I must've got that out of order, everybody. With $109,000 uh, pledged, 209 backers, that's a lot of money. And again, unfortunately, it was really sad what we found out. And you know, him passing away was however, was basically saved a lot of people because there were people who put a lot of money in and investment with this TCG, and they lost it all, man. They lost it all. That is one of the downsides of Kickstarter, guys. It's a gamble. I mean, if you've never been to Vegas, never been to a casino, Kickstarter's the next best thing because that's what it is, guys. It is a gamble. You just don't know. You have to really do your due diligence as best as you can. And, and the problem is that some of these people con us pretty well. And even though you do your due diligence, it just still doesn't matter. They they will con you and you'll, they'll walk away. But it's a very unfortunate issue. Let's move on to our next Kickstarter TCG, and that was Polywog. Now, I never got to know, uh, know anything about Polywog. I've just heard that basically I think they went out of business. I don't think they're producing anything anymore. I actually have a few packs in a box where I have a whole bunch of indie TCG stuff at. Someone gave me, in fact, I believe it was Clan Torres who gave me a few packs of Hollywoods. I'd never gotten any from them, but I don't think they're in business. Now, one of the very negative aspects to these Kickstarters, and that's something that everybody should understand. This is a big disclaimer now, big disclaimer for those people who are going to go into a Kickstarter, right? There is no guarantee you get product. Okay, there's no guarantee. These companies can uh, walk away from the table with the money, and there's nothing that can happen from it. It stinks. It's happened once too many times. Now, in Polywog's case, I do believe that they, I know they did actually. They did print product up. I think they tried. I just don't think it was successful. I, I'm not really sure. I couldn't give you a true story on where they're at or what happened to them. I just, I don't think they're currently in business, which is kind of crazy when you see that they pulled in 165, almost $166,000, 576 backers. Again, I don't believe they're in business anymore. I believe it's gone. I believe they went under or they, they paused. I'm not quite sure on that. Again, I didn't do research on where the companies currently were at. If I didn't already know where they were at, but yeah, I don't believe they're really doing anything right now. That's a lot of money. I don't know what happened. I don't know mismanagement. Maybe they're, again, maybe they're still around. You know, I'm not, again, I'm, I know I really don't have a personal opinion on it. Again, that was just all hearsay. So let's move on to our next one, and that is going to be Cannabis. Uh, so Cannabis pulled in hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars. That's a lot of freaking money. Four hundred eleven backers. And just as it sounds, Cannabis, it was based on basically people who enjoy the high life. Let's just say that, right? I was never into it. I didn't dig it, as they say. I didn't even like the card art. It did, it did have that weird kind of hippie-ish vibe to it. I know a lot of guys like Wagonson, some other people got really into it. But unfortunately, I don't think it's done very well. Now, I know they were at a lot of Collecticons. But again, I kind of heard some negativity around the company about things. So I'm not really sure if they're still going, if they've paused, if you know, if they've stopped completely. I'm not really sure, guys. But again, 
they were able to accumulate $177,000 from a lot of stoners out there. <laughs> so, hey man, you know, there's a lot of people who probably enjoyed it. And it, if it's still working, it's still working, right? So, uh, but yeah, the, pretty high up on that list for a indie TCG, guys. But we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. And that is Akora. Now, the gentleman who created Akora is from England. They were seeking $20,000. They raised almost 200,000, 197,000 pounds, which in US dollars, that is 200K. Uh, they've done really well. Now, I really, really like Akora. And Akora is one of the TCGs that has actually made it into quite a few LGSs around the country. Now, a lot of these TCGs have never made it into LGSs. Some may, maybe in their local area where they're from, but Akora was one of those ones that made it pretty much nationwide including over in europe into a lot of places so i really enjoyed what i saw from accord now i was talking with the owner at eclectic con i was trying to of course trying to get some stuff to do a review on he was supposed to send me stuff it never happened and we were going to do an interview unfortunately he got real busy and left and then when i went to go get the interview he had already gone and that was it but hopefully i'll meet him uh on the circuit this year because Again, Okora has some really cool stuff. And if you check my May Dallas Collecticon video, because I got several Collecticon videos out there, you will see their booth and a lot of the epicness that they provided. Again, another Japanese ask anime type, you know, uh, collectible card game. I, as far as playability goes, I, something I'm not too sure on. I know they were putting some tournaments on early on. I'm not too sure how the game went. It would be cool to talk to some players that you know, get their thoughts on the game. But Accord was another one that I personally truly enjoyed. Another one on the list, guys. Let's move on. Here we are at the current one, Nom Nom. It is the world of Nom Nomverse. Victor Larson, this is the brainchild of Victor Larson, Johnny, AKA Moldy Potions, and Tyrena Tessa. But there's actually four of them that are involved in this TCG. And of course, they got a lot of help from other people as well like our buddies uh, Cardboard and Coffee and Ken has and some other people, they have done really well. We're only three days in. They are the influencer behind this video today, actually. They are three days into their Kickstarter as the filming of this video, and they just hit $300,000. And they still have 26, 25 days to go. They're doing pretty good. I have a lot of faith in them. This is the first ever Kickstarter I've actually done and I've pledged to. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be exciting times. I'm also an anchor for them. An anchor is what they're calling a content creator. So we're going to be getting stuff to, you know, get out there and market for them. We're going to be pushing a lot. You know, we're going to be open about it too. Because that was one of the discussions I had with them is, you know, you got to understand we're going to be open about things. So... If we see something we don't like, we may make a video on that to point it out. But ultimately, you know, we're here to for the success of Nom Nom. And the best part about this is I don't think we're going to have to worry about those issues. Because they literally have such good communication already with us that it's crazy good. So I'm not worried about making a negative video because I think we're going to have nothing but positivity with Nom Nom. And I'm super excited for it. And yeah, but Nom Nom is on the list, currently at 300,000. Now I know when I took the screenshot, we're just under it, but they have hit the 300,000 mark, which is pretty epic, which also activated another new level of goodies they're gonna be throwing out at us. And if you don't know, the 200,000 mark actually activated several of the former MetaZoo artists, some of the, the most favorite artists in MetaZoo, uh, Chris Campman, Poncho, Seb, and Isaac Sky Lee. They're going to be doing some special alternate art card work in this set, which is going to be really epic. Looking forward to that. But they've actually brought in another new artist based on uh, a goal we hit. And now that we hit 300,000, oh my gosh, we're looking at a possible figure now. A figure they're going to get done. So we're really, really looking forward to it. That's the world of Nom Nom. You can check them out. I have, I do have their Kickstarter down below in the description. Let's move on for our next one on the list. Again, they're not even finished yet. Let's go on here. Next up, Rise TCG out of Paris, France. Well, I don't feel out of Paris, France. Joe's here in Mulhouse, France. But um, I first got introduced to Rise from Cardboard and Coffee 
who had uh, developed a relationship with them and I was really impressed again with uh, with their stuff, their card art. I did open like one or two packs and I really did like it. Now Rise got a huge, as you can see here, a huge pledge, 354,000 euros. Now translate that to US dollars. I, we're pretty, pretty equal in that realm, I believe. It's not too crazy of a difference there, but uh, that's a lot of money for that TCG 679 backers. But again, I actually did like what I've seen. So we'll see how Rise goes. I'm not too sure of their lore, their story, what they're all about. Again, you can check out Cardboard and Coffee's YouTube channel. I believe he has some videos that he did on there, possibly even some playability uh, videos that he put up there. But Rise is on our list as one of the, the bigger indie TCGs. And they're not going to be the only one that's coming out of France, by the way, in this video. Let's move on to the next one. All right, everyone. We got some D Spirits in the house. Now, D Spirits is one that I just never, it never got my, my attention. I'll be honest with you. I did see it. I, it just wasn't for me. Uh, some people really liked it and some people didn't. It's another one of these TCGs. I'm not sure if they're still around. But I have to believe they are because do you see how much money they were backed with? Three hundred and sixty-two, almost sixty-three thousand dollars. Four hundred and ninety-nine backers. I mean, they should really have hit it home run. But how? I, I really do believe it was their choice and direction that they went that may have hurt them. Uh, I, I'm not really sure what was going on there. I heard people say it was like. You know, it was little kid artwork. I heard people say that they liked it. You know, it's just like with MetaZoo games, you know, a lot of people were negative on the artwork, whereas a lot of us really enjoyed it. I think the same thing goes, you know, everyone has their own personal opinions on what they think about something. So, but Dear Spirits is another one of, one of, one of those. It's out of my hometown, actually, which I actually didn't even know that until I looked this up. But D Spirits, and I do have some packs of theirs as well in my uh, little box of Indie TCG packs. But again, not my cup of tea personally, but it did do pretty well out there. I'm not sure if they're still making product though. That's the only thing. I I don't think, I think they are. Maybe they're taking a break. You can always probably just, you know, Google it and find out. But that's the spirits. Well, let's move on. So we are now 34 minutes into this video. Hopefully you guys are sticking with me. We have Alpha Clash TCG. Wow, what an amazing, amazing TCG. I really like them. I was supposed to meet up with them, I want to say at Long Beach, and unfortunately, it didn't happen. I really wanted to get with the creator and check them out a little bit more as well. I wanted to do a little review on their stuff. Alpha Clash, though, I got to see some product from other people, and I was pretty impressed, man. I really enjoyed it. I would love to have probably done something with them. I liked it that much. Four hundred and twenty two almost twenty three thousand dollars that's one thousand two hundred sixty backers that's a lot of money to get a tcg going so you know that they were doing really well with it he's and you know if you on if you're on instagram you probably see his uh his videos popping up he's very very marketable you know he's done a lot of work in that realm so again alpha clash Definitely one of the good ones out there. Unfortunately, I've not seen it in many, you know, LGSs. I've been to a ton of LGSs around this country, especially when I'm traveling for the events and the cons. And I've really never seen it in the LGSs like I have, like, say, a Cora or another one that's on this list we'll be talking about here really soon. But I think it's a really, you know, strong uh, TCG as far as collectability goes. Again, I just don't know about that playability. And the playability is the biggest part of a lot of these TCGs, can they bring that group in? Because once you bring that group in, then you've got a base for a long future. And one of the things with Alpha Clashes, again, I'm not really aware if they do or not. So hopefully I'll get to see them this summer. Again, I'll be going to uh, Collecticons and yeah, hopefully I get to meet them. I'm gonna be looking for them. But let's move on to our next one on the list. We're getting near the end now, because we're up there right now. Here we go. Next up is one of the biggest bust in the entire TCG world. Uh, unfortunately, 
Maelstrom, it was a, uh, I don't want to say it's, it's, it's a, a story that I think has been told one too many times, but it really is. This was also a very crazy story. So Maelstrom, I, the, people were trying to get me to go into Maelstrom and I met the crew. I didn't really like what I was seeing. Now, I, I'm a big sucker for dragons and they had these promo dragon cards and they gave me some of those to use and give away. Uh, I was there while they were they were breaking their boxes open. It, it was kind of strange. My, again, my, my good friend, Will Ferner, who's kind of bowed out of the TCG world at this point. And uh, yeah, it, it, it was a tough one, man. I, I wasn't really all in on it. I tried to give it some attention. I actually filmed a bunch of videos. Now, if you don't know, <laughs> the owner of this game faked his death and tried to run off with the money. Now, if you haven't seen it, if you can't tell, I know I got it a little bit at the top there, so it's a little cut off maybe for some people, but they brought in five hundred and eight thousand dollars half a mil guys half a mil 810 backers geek toy hut i believe was one of their biggest backers man that guy was all in on it i feel so bad for him but everybody took a wash with this tcg everybody did uh it, it's terrible what happened nobody could get their money back obviously very very bad for a lot of people again he the guy faked his death I don't know what he was thinking. He was found, and I believe there's lawsuits and everything else in the world going on, but the problem is with a Kickstarter, guys. Again, 100% gamble, 100% gamble. But that was a crazy story, Maelstrom, but I was never, ever impressed with anything they had done. It was really, to be honest with you, I'm gonna say it was half-ass. I feel bad for the artist. I think the artist got screwed over too. I think their concepts of artwork, because I, I actually, saw a lot of their concept their art concept at the con and it was really epic looking so whatever they did with the foiling and the layering all that they really screwed that up man that 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 was terrible that's gonna go down in history man maelstrom guys but let's gotta move on half a mil man half a mil next up is otherverse otherverse with 600 and seventy-two thousand dollars. Now they've been making a huge stink on IG, and when I mean stink, I'm talking about a lot of people been ripping other verse booster boxes like crazy lately. So I don't know what's going on, but maybe people are just, just now getting their stock, their fulfillments. I don't know, but for a long time, other verse was kind of in no man's land now i do know that they had done something with dr applesauce i know he had gotten a card out of them like a personalized card he was in their set uh i know he stopped making stuff with them i, I think things had paused something something had gone on there i don't know exactly but they got six hundred and seventy two thousand dollars from 805 backers they got a crap ton of money but again it looks like stuff's being opened sucker for dragons here and I'm loving what I've been seeing so far. I, I think it's, you know, again, a lot of money there to make sure you put out a good product. So maybe I'll pick up another Verse Booster Box at some point here to check out. I've never actually gotten to open their stuff. Now, I've been to their booth and I've seen it, but I didn't get any of their promos. I missed out on everything. I think they were one of the companies, too, that instead of giving away a Collecticon promo like most do, they were charging for it. And that kind of upset a lot of people because, you know, especially when you get six hundred and seventy two thousand dollars you're charging for your promos that's pretty crazy stuff but i think otherverse seems to be coming on again maybe it's got a psych of life i don't know but i know it kind of went in the dark for me and and knowing what was going on with them but i've been seeing them coming alive lately so who knows guys but let's move on for our next one i think we are in the top three now top three i think it is cryptic Oh my gosh, Tanner over at Cryptic, man. What an amazing, amazing job. $873,000. Holy cow, almost almost a million, guys. Tanner is the owner and creator of Cryptic TCG. It's really based on magic. It's heavily based on magic. He's made a lot of little changes in the game that he felt magic was, you know, not willing to ever do. And of course, he actually got a huge backer as well in Chum Lee, Chum Lee from Pawn Stars out in Vegas, uh, who's supporting this um, TCG as well. 
But uh, I got to interview Tanner. It is in my Collecticon video from back in May. We did check out some of the cards. I didn't actually get to see a lot of their stuff. And uh, Tanner actually never gave me anything to really, you know, review. So I never got to actually look at too much stuff. I just got a couple of promos. I actually gave those to a friend of mine who really, really wanted the cryptid stuff. So I gave them the promos. And then I gave, I gave a couple other promos out to one of the local card shops here. And I don't think I really have anything from Cryptic at all. I thought Tanner was going to be a little something to do a review on, but unfortunately I never got anything. And uh, they're still doing pretty well, though. He's still out there driving around in his van, and I think Cryptic's doing pretty decent. They are another one that got into some LGSs. So once you can break your way into an LGS store, that's really positive because that means people will see your stuff up on a shelf, which is a really, really positive thing. So uh, a lot of money there, I think. This is, again, number three on the list for getting the most. So let's go on to the next one. And that is going to be Nostalgics. Actually, we might be. That might be number four or five on the list. But Nostalgic. Now, this, the guy who, who created Nostalgic is uh, a very well-known Instagram artist who we, um, you know, had a little relationship with and loved the stuff that he was doing. He was crea creating... Pokemon cards and he was doing such a great job of it and he just said you know what I'm gonna create my own TCG Nostalgics now I never got into Nostalgics I did get to see some stuff he gave me some of the promos uh, at the at the con he's a really really cool dude I really like him a lot and I'm I was really hoping for good success for him I never really got any heavy product to take a review on his stuff was pretty hard to come by because it was really sought after I know when he went to Indianapolis for Gen Con, uh, he was putting stuff, you know, all over the place for people to find, which been, you know, that was pretty cool. And he's, he, it's pretty good art though. I, I, I literally, Zaba makes great art. And I was really impressed with his stuff. I really probably should have gone in and picked up some of his stuff. But I, at that point in time, I was kind of really 100% all in on MetaZoo. And I, you know, it, it just wasn't really right at the time for me to be going into these other TCGs like that. But I really wish I kind of would have picked up some earlier stuff from Zaba. And yeah, unfortunately I didn't. But Nostalgic is another really good one. And again, I have seen that in a few LGSs. So they've been able to wiggle their way in as well. 935,000. To be honest with you, it doesn't surprise me because he really grew big on Instagram for his artwork. So big, big ups to him. Over 2,000 people backing Nostalgics. Again, it's a really well well put together TCG. And as far as playability goes, I heard it's pretty decent too. I, I'm not sure where their realm is in that. You know, where they're, where they're headed to uh, as far as their gameplay goes. But as far as collectability goes, man, of course Zaba hit it out of the ballpark with that one. But let's go on to our next TCG. And that is the guys over at Grand Archive. Uh, again, almost pulling in a million dollars on their TCG. Now, I first met them when they were buddies, buddies up next to my guy's booth at Mavs Collectibles. And again, we got to meet them and see their stuff. And right away, I was super, super impressed. The artwork was absolutely my, it was just levels above every other indie TCG I'd seen at that point. And I was super impressed. And I never got to do an interview with them in that first one. Now, I got to meet him again in Long Beach, where a very unfortunate, kind of funny, and very thankful on my part accident had happened with them when I had knocked over something of theirs. But uh, again, it's in the video. It's in the Long Beach Collecticon video. But I got to really check their artwork out. And wow, absolutely mind-blowing. Well, And again, they are another TCG that has gotten their way into LGSs. I've literally seen them in multiple LGS stores. I don't see a lot of people playing it, unfortunately, but as far as collectability goes, absolutely mind-blowing amazing on their artwork. Such, such beautiful. If you know Yu-Gi-Oh, the, the, the Prism, um, I forget what it's called now, was it Prism Armatics or something like that? Some of the, that's kind of the lineage I believe they went with that that line of 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 uh, oiling, and it's just with the artwork unbelievable. I I really think Grand Archive, as long as they manage right and they're and they they're doing good with their gameplay, 
but unfortunately I've heard the gameplay is not up to par for a lot of people. That's just word I've heard, you know, what I've heard from people who, who sat down to play it. Some people say it's okay, it's a fun game to play, but uh, it just depends, I guess, on your level playability too, possibly. But from an artwork perspective, I have yet to see, I have yet to see a more beautifully well done artwork than Grand Archive. So crazy, man. Almost a million with, with only 1,539 backers. That says a lot. That says a lot. That's one of the the least amount of backers for this high high of uh, pledging, right? All right, everyone. I think we're coming down. It's possibly the final or... No, we have two more left on the list. I just remembered what they are. One of them is going to be overseas. Actually, both are from overseas. Let's go ahead and hit it. And our next one up is... Oh, I don't even know because I... I cut it off, but I want to say, <laughs> I can't believe I cut it off. I want to say, is that sorcery? Which one did I do here? Oh, Paris, France, Paris, France. Okay, so I know which one this is just because of that. This is a new TCG that just came to my attention literally this week. It is pretty crazy, guys. It is pretty crazy that they've reached this height already. And that is Altered TCG. Now, I I looked a little into it. I, I just don't think it's for me based on what I saw. But it's really early on. But as you can see here, they are at 2.5 million pledges. Or dollars, excuse me. Okay. I, I, I'm completely blown away. I, I just don't know how they hit this much. They have 6,805 backers. But 2.5 million for Altered TCG. Again, they, you can go check them out. And uh, you can check their video. Their video, uh, the marketing video, the promo video. Holy crap. I mean, that looks like that was 100,000 alone just to produce unreal high-end legit promo video right but when i was looking at the the story and everything to it i i, I kind of wasn't feeling it man and again i don't know i didn't really delve into it like i probably should have done it but on first looks it just wasn't hitting me like something i would like but obviously six thousand people must really like it almost seven thousand because 2.5 million guys wow what mind-blowing money to give to a Kickstarter. I really hope that whoever runs that one does not walk off with that money. Because again, they actually have every right, unless Kickstarter has made changes, to walk off with that money. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Now, I know there's supposed to be some some safety nets there. But they these people find a way, man. That's a lot of money. 2.5 million altered TCG. Which brings us... To our final, and I did forget to mention somebody, and I can't believe I forgot this, but we're going to bring that up after we're done. This brings us to our final one. Can you guess which one do you think this is going to be? Who's going to be our final indie TCG, guys? Who's going to be the final indie TCG? This is pretty mind-blowing. It took a while for the stuff to get out. They definitely had some delay issues. They had some issues. It is made out of country. It is absolutely crazy stuff. Okay, and then we're gonna talk about a few un unmentionables. Well, you know, not mentionable, non-mentionables, right? Let's go ahead and click it. And our final is sorcery. Wow. What an absolute unreal um, end to this sorcery. Coming in at a New Zealand dollars. 5.7 almost 5.8 million New Zealand dollars which equates to 3.54 million US dollars and sorcery just started being delivered to people a lot of people were like it but again it is another game that's really strongly masked after like Magic the Gathering Flesh and Blood it's another one of those games so I, I'm not sure 
what its longevity is going to be because of that. That's going to be the big question here. But wow, 6,456 backers. Creation by Eric Olsen and Nicholas Reynolds. Absolutely mind-blowing that they, they pulled in $3.54 million for this. And again, it's just getting out, getting out to everybody. It's getting in the hands to a lot of people. Uh, I, I'm just not sure again. I don't know. I don't know how its longevity of what it's going to be. But that's going to bring us to the end of this. However, I got a couple of TCGs I want to mention. Legion of Will. Legion of Will sent me a booster box, and I opened it. And I was so impressed with what they did. Another game that's kind of, you know, I would say it's kind of after Magic the Gathering. You know, it's got that art style to it. I really enjoyed it, though. I really enjoyed the arts. I really enjoyed the card. I felt it was made very well. The quality was good. I loved the booster box and everything. Legion of Will. However, I don't believe they did a Kickstarter. I think they went ahead and avoided Kickstarter and just did a crowdfunding on their own and that's why again it's another one of those bams that i should have mentioned at the very beginning of the video but i forgot about it but uh legion of will again another really really fun tcg and again you can check them out they have a website they're still active and uh i may be reaching out to them to see their next set because i do know that they're on to their next set but legion of will guys check them out and then of course our other really big tcg that's still hanging around. We thought it was going to go under. For a while there, we thought it was going to go under. Again, it's a non-Kickstarter TCG, and that is Flesh and Blood. Uh, I was getting into Flesh and Blood. I started getting into it pretty big right before MetaZoo happened. But then this, you know, the stonk world kicked in. Prices went absorbently high. I couldn't afford to even get my hands on it. I said, screw this. I'm, I'm gonna, I, I really like the MetaZoos. I'm going to go to it. I got into MetaZoo. I was hanging on. I was hanging on for dear life onto my couple of booster boxes that I had picked up. And I eventually ended up selling them off. They looked like they were going to go under for a while there because they had some major issues. It was They were the other victim of Channel Fireball, if anybody knows that whole story. And they were lucky enough to survive it. I think the European crowd really pulled them out. You know, it is a it is a game that is printed out of Belgium, actually. So I understand why it was really big over in Europe, but I believe Europe really bailed them out. And now they seem to be flourishing once again here in the United States, but that's flesh and blood. Uh, pretty amazing stuff overall, everyone. But that's gonna do it. 55 minute long video. I don't know, hopefully you guys stayed for this one. If you did, you know, I definitely would appreciate you guys smashing that like button, subscribing to the channel. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. We will be opening some of these indie Kickstarters, uh, indie TCGs here in the near future on the channel. I will be going to the very first Collecticon of 2024, everybody, in Dallas. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I will have an all access pass. It's gonna be super exciting to, uh, to get there and interview a lot of people and check some new things out hopefully for the year but thank you so much for all your support out there and i will see you guys in the next one as always have more epic adventures with us here at epic tube hd everybody peace out until the next one see you guys